welcome our fourth guest. His name is Kenji Gore. He went through the Manchester United youth system from 2002 to 2013. And he has played professionally for clubs such as Swansea, Den Haag, Northampton and Nacional. What makes Kenji such a great guest is that he has a great appreciation for the mental side of sport and football. Uh, he's founded the On The Ball squad, which he exclusively welcomes professional football players around the world and provide them with a safe space to talk about uh, or, or talk to each other about the struggles and experiences as professionals. Uh, he's also the host of Conversations with Kenji uh, series where he interviews professional footballers about their experiences. I know he's had some great guests that I'm definitely interested in. Uh, so let's welcome Kenji to the podcast. We- Here he is. <laughs> hey, hey, man. How are you? Yeah. yeah, good, man. How are you guys? Yeah, good, good. Yeah, did, you have, good. did you have training today? Yeah, literally just come back now. How was it? It was good, man. It was good. What's the weather like there? Bro, I would love to t- show you guys. It's so hot. Really? Yeah, man. Bro, I went out today. I woke up, opened up the blinds, and I was like, wow, thank God, man. Man. Thank God that I live the life that I live. <laughs> yeah, me and John <laughs> always talk about, like, um, like retiring in Spain and stuff like that, and, like, the fact that you're in Portugal. Like, just waking up to the nice weather has such a big impact on your mood. It's massive. And especially, like, you know, like, it just gives you so much, like, more, like, joy in your heart. Like, even, like, it's just little things, but I never really took these things, like, serious. Like, even as I, as I came down and got in my car, just put a bit of music on, and then I, I was put my sunglasses on, I was like, yo, I'm going to training. <laughs> yeah. I, felt, I felt blessed. Like, even though life isn't really going the way that I want it to go, like, football's not going amazing. Like, still, I'm just like, this is... Well, how can I complain? You know what I mean? How can I complain? Yeah, life you, is good. How do yeah. you keep so positive like that? Like that's, I feel like that's so unique. <laughs> You're yeah. always so positive. You know what it is? You know what it is? It is, it is work. You know, like, it's not like I was just overnight like this, but it is, this is who I am. You know, I've just, I just realized who I actually am. And that gave me so much freedom. That gave me so much like, Understand when I once I started to really understand who I was, like that's what really got me to, to this place right now. So no circumstance gonna stop me from having joy in my heart, man. What's it like like adapting to the like Portuguese culture and stuff? Like, was it weird for you? Or like was it difficult for you? It was it was a big change. It was a big change. Like coming from Swansea and coming from you know, like even though there was beaches and stuff, there's a whole different life. You know, yeah. it's completely different. Like, I can't compare it. Oh, man. But, but even like coming from Swansea, like the trainings, like it was raining, windy, you know, like completely different. I'm wearing molds now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing molds every session. You know, like it's just, it's just nice, man. Like it's, it, I do feel blessed. I do feel blessed. Now, if you could look outside my window right now, it's like the complete opposite of the weather in Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing, but bro, I, I feel sorry for you, man. Yeah. <laughs> one day one day I'll uh, get out of the UK <laughs> yeah. but yeah but thanks so much for coming on man uh, we had like a really good convo uh, the other day mm. uh, just like to break the ice of it and uh, yeah we're super excited to, to start off this episode with you um, we don't want it to be like an interview we want it to be a chat like okay. that's, that's the main goal you know and um, I guess like a perfect way to start is to kind of maybe talk about like yourself and like growing up, uh, your career as a footballer, like, unpack everything you like. If we're to, like, start from a chronological order, like, what was it like? Like, where did you grow up? Yeah, so for me, I was actually um, brought up into the football world. So, like, my dad was a professional footballer. So, from a young age, like, football was my life. Like, football was life. You know, that was the only thing that really mattered to me. And I really realized that from a from a young age as well and and going to my dad's games and you know life was revolved around football so I was born in Holland um in a in a place called Spijkenisse which is near Rotterdam and I was there for for five years we actually then moved to Amsterdam where my dad played for Ajax at the time and um and yeah when I'm then when I moved to England he moved to Huddersfield so we moved as a family to England and that's when I was five. 
Um, so that's why I've got an English accent. <laughs> I literally grew up in England. Uh, my life was, was all in England, really, growing up. And, yeah, from a young age, I've just... Football was my life, man. That football was everything that I loved. Um, and, yeah, like, my parents always used to tell me, like, the presence that they ever got me was a football. You know, it was really just in my heart to just play football. Um, you know, I can remember going to a couple of games and, and just people just screaming my dad's name and and then that feelings like that like don't don't ever like um don't ever stop stop from coming into my mind yeah. you know I can just remember like one game where he was playing and I could just go Dino Dino, Dino. <laughs> and it made me so proud you know even as a young yeah. boy like it made me so proud like that's my dad and I could always like imagine myself being on that pitch as well so it's a real, real interesting uh, dynamic there, and and yeah, like I was, I was then six years old, and um, and I can remember playing my first game for Broadheath Central. It was like a, a local team near me, and um, and I was playing there. And I was playing for a couple of years, years above me, and it was actually my first game. And at that first game, there was a, a, a Manchester City scout there, and uh, he went straight up to my dad and he said, "Is that your son?" And he said, yeah, yeah, that's my son. He was like, oh, we'd love to, to have him come and train. And this is my card. And my dad was like, definitely not. It's his first game. Let him enjoy it. You know, let him just be, let him just enjoy it. Um, I don't want it to put any pressure on him at this young age. Like, nah, that's not going to happen. But then we went home. <laughs> and my mom is like, what? I'm going <laughs> next time. What are you killing his dream? You know, all of this stuff. So and anyway, um, anyway, he came to the next game and... Um, and my mum was there then this time and and um, he just, my dad just saw them how much I enjoyed it. You know, I just loved the, loved, loved football. And um, I ended up going to train with Manchester City. And as I was training at Manchester City, um, I then also went to train at United. So it was like I trained at like both at the same time from a young age. So as I, as you can tell, like, from, the from, 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 young. Six, <laughs> from six years old, like I've just, football has been my life. Football's been my life from six. So, yeah, like I've just been blessed to, 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 to do what I love to do. And until this day, I'm still I'm still a footballer. And yeah, I just feel I just feel blessed, man. I find that really interesting that like your dad, his initial reaction was like, mm. just let oh, just let me enjoy it. Enjoy the football. Like any other dad, as you can imagine, would be like, OK, here, like I'll take your card. Like, let's 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 talk. Mm. Let's figure something out. Do you think that's like kind of through his experience, he kind of appreciates like the kind of understanding of like football is about having fun first, you know, like so weird. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's so many like revelations and understandings that I've got from why my dad did certain things. Mm. So I can remember like when I was 14, um, he, he asked me, he said, Kenji, do you want to, do you, do you want to be a professional footballer? And I was like, yeah, of course, you know, what's, what's life without football, you know, like yeah. football, life is, of course. And my dad was like, do you want to do everything in your power to be a professional footballer? And I was like, yeah, man, of course I want to, yeah, of course. And then he was like, um, okay, from this day, I'm going to treat you like a professional footballer. So now looking back, he made me make that decision. He made me make the decision to my choice to be a professional footballer, my choice that I wanted to do it. So when things got tough, when things got hard, when it was I was on the bench or when I wasn't playing, <laughs> my dad, I would like say to myself, like, I chose this. You know, like, how can I, I, I chose this? Like, this is what I picked. So I could never blame him. Yeah. I could never blame anybody else because i chose this life yeah, yeah so i can now i can now understand why my dad did certain things and how he kind of managed everything because he's experienced everything that i was going through you know? i feel so, like yeah, i feel like those true. um those figures like I, I, I watched a kobe interview and he was talking about how he raises his kids mm. um and he was saying the um so how your dad promoted enjoyment he was saying, that's all I want my kids to do. Like, I'm not drilling them, like, I'm, I'm, I'm making it unenjoyable. Like, I just want them to go out and really enjoy the sport. And Michael Jordan is a, like, good example of that, how he ended up being one of the best basketballers of all time. 
mm. and he was playing baseball at 12 years old. So that just shows like, just do what you enjoy growing up and like things will, things will fall into place and you'll end up doing what you want to do. Exactly that. Mm. Exactly that. And, and that's in every walk of life, you know, you've got to do what you enjoy. You only live once. Go, you can be and do anything you want in this world. Like go and do whatever, like go and enjoy, make the most out of the life that you've been given. You know, like if, if you love to do something, do that. Like, it doesn't mean that you have to be like a professional or you have to, like it just means to go and do what you desire to do and go do what you love to do. I feel like the role of parents is so like key because a lot of the time, like I, I know gr growing up uh, and me seeing footballers around Leicester, like mm. their dads really push that like, it's like they've failed on their dream of becoming a pro footballer. So sort of like pushing their kids to be one when sometimes like the kid may, may not even want that. So um, definitely for our parents, I just think promote enjoyment and don't force like your kids into a dream that maybe they're not that interested in. It's true because like even as I'm looking back at my career and and how that's how it's how the dynamic was and how I see um, my teammates and, and players that I speak to now, it makes such a big impact, not just in their career, but in their life. Mm. So I can remember when, you know, I got I got that um, I got that news that I wasn't going to get a new contract at United. Right. Yeah. And that feeling there is a mad feeling. Because what, what age was that? I was under eight. I was eighteen, so okay. it was, I wasn't. I wasn't getting my pro. So yeah. I've gone from being six years old to eighteen, going to United every single day. It was like going to school. Like it was like this is my life. Like it was normal. And then as that normality gets taken away from you, you're like, wait, who am I? Mm. Like, what is it that you know? Like. I don't understand like what I'm going to tell my friends. I don't know how I'm going to show up in a walk into a cafe. Everyone in my neighborhood knows me as Kenji Gori, the footballer, like who am I now? And there's so many players going through this right now that it's like, because we place our identity in football, it's like, as we do that, we're actually, we're, we're actually, stopping us from being who we actually are meant to be. Mm. So that's why, like, in my life, I've just realised that I'm way more than just a footballer. And that's why I do a lot more off the pitch than I, that, that, than I would normally do because I understand that football is temporary. Football, like everything in the world is temporary, but football is going to come to an end. Mm. Like, and then what? Like, and then you look at the statistics of bankruptcy, you look at statistics of depression and all of these things. It's like, wait, this is the reality that we're all going to face. It could last that we're 14. You could last 12. It could last 13. It could last 18, 21, 22. Like one day it's going to come to an end. Yeah. You know, but that, but if you place your identity in that, like you're going to place the value as a person in that as well. So if football's going bad, that means... I'm not going to go into that cafe because they're going to ask me how football's going and I don't want them to ask me how football's going. So I'm not going to go there. And now you're not going to show up as your normal self and your confident self because you've just missed a sitter, mm. you know? And this is what, this is what's so hard and it's difficult, but we need to remember anybody football that is listening to remember you are a man first. You're a man first and a football second. Your value doesn't come from what you do on the pitch. Your value comes from who you are. You know, we've gone straight into the deep end here. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> like that's good. Deep, I just wanted to remind, if there is a football listening to this, like, please don't put your value as a person into your career. And even that's in any walk of life. You know, don't put your value. If, if you're not where you want to be in your career, if that's any job, like, don't come and feel less of a man because of that. No, yeah. Identity is like such such an important factor. And uh, mm -hmm. I think like just touching back to like that meeting, so obviously you didn't get your pro. Mm -hmm. um, there's three different phases of football. So obviously um, it's the foundation phase and youth development. So I, I know that the foundation is like 11, like 11 to 12. Is there like a selection procedure then? And then one at 16 and then one at 18. Is that is that the case? So, so it, every single year, like I can just remember like, at United, it was like the furthest pitch was the youngest age group. So it was like under 10s was there, and then the 11s and 12s and 13s that like would go, and it would go closer to 
the under 18s and then the yeah, first yeah, yeah. you know so every single year it's like at, at, at my age group it was like that you would then make it to the next year. You would then make it to the next right, year. Right, so, so every year there's like a, whether you're going to get next year like, or not. If you're going to get one on. So there's like that, that uncertainty good. like at all times. At all times, from six. What was, Did you feel that pressure like every year, like especially when it starts getting towards the end of the season? Like, did you feel yeah. that? Parents evening was mad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yo, it was like, yo, it's parents evening, but it's like, yo. And then you, you, you tried, you have to like assess like where you're at, like how many games you've played, like, is it really? But for me, honestly, like, I just, I really gave it everything that I had. Mm. Like, and that's why I like, but back, looking back as well, like, I always felt like I had to work so much harder than everybody else. Yeah. You know, and I know that as footballers, we all feel that. Like every single player feels that we have to work harder than anybody else. And it's just so, it's just so crazy because it's all about the perspective of where you're actually at. But just to go back onto what you're actually saying, like every single year you get that, but then it gets to under four teams and then it's like, it's scholarship. Yeah. You know, it doesn't go from under 14s, 15s, 16s. It goes to under 14s, then 16s. So now the group is coming together. So yeah. now, like, that stage is like a lot of people get released that stage. Yeah. You I know, like because it's like the this. first year, second years, you know, that's when that's when the real decisions get made. So it, that, that, that was a real big, 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 like... Moment. Moment yeah. for everyone. No, 100%. So w- when you got to that, um, so w- was it just like one meeting where they just called you in and was like, uh, we've decided that like you're not going to get the contract or was it like a progressive thing where they sort of eased you into it or was it just one meeting? So so the scholarship was one meeting. Um, I can remember going into the office and they were like, yep, we're going to give you a contract and it was just so much joy and like, yeah. so I was like, thank God. You know what yeah. I mean? It was like, I did it. And then, you know, when you're sat there and then you see your friends coming out the meeting and they're crying and you're like, oh my days, like I've just spent seven years with you and you're not getting your deal. Like it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking at 16. You know, man. It's, it's difficult, man. Cause I, I imagine thought- like all around that time, there because that, that's the sort of time where you're doing GCSEs as well so it's like you've either f- focused on your football or like people are focused on the GCSEs it's one or the other and if you haven't focused on your GCSEs and you've not been selected like what have you got then you know it's, um, it's deep it's deep stuff and you know like at the end of the day like GCSEs and school and stuff like that it's like if where you put your focus is is, is what, where the results are going to go. So if you're going to, fo- like, where your focus is, that's where your energy goes. You know, like, as Tony Robbins says, where your focus goes, your energy flows. And that's like, if you're going to focus on football, you've got to really do everything in your power, but you also have to realise that there's more to your life. And obviously, like, that comes, that comes with education. And education doesn't always come from school. You know, you can go and get, you can go and get education from podcasts, anything. Like, you can go and go and get, do do um, webinar, like there's so many things that you can get your education from. So like, I just try to say, obviously you need to get the certain, you know, do do your best in school, do your best in everything. But that doesn't mean to say just because you don't have your GCSEs, you, 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 you know, you're, you're, yeah. you're nothing. You know, you can no. get, you can do, you can do everything. You know, yeah, you can do so much more. Like, uh, And there are skills what you actually, because... I know that a lot of people, a lot of footballers, they just focus on the technical skills, but there are a lot of psychological skills, what they're actually learning and, mm-hmm. and they have that can be transferred into other um, like careers and stuff. So yeah. I'm like uh, basing my project this year around uh, something called the five C's framework, which is uh, commitment, communication, concentration, control, and confidence. Mm-hmm. And basically these are all the psychological assets, what they have that can be transferred um, either to everyday, life. Yeah, to everyday life or other careers but I'm sort of focusing on um, them and then what are the skills required to get to the professional game um, so Joe when you got that pro scholar mm. or the pro contract yeah. um, it's sort of what are the skills required to actually get that contract and it's sort of making the players aware of that, um, that. yeah so but, so yeah, 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 you're gonna kind of like interview the coaches involved, aren't you? Like, yeah. you like to understand what what do they 
want from players? Like, what qualities, specific qualities, mm, do you want? I think, I think communi- uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Kenji, I think communication is a big one, maybe, would you say, like, mm-hmm. o- on the pitch and maybe off the pitch also? Yeah, because communicate, like, for me, the biggest thing is, like, that, like, you've got to understand where you're actually at and you have to be real with where you're at. Like, com- that's why communication is key. Like, if a coach is not communicating that clearly where you actually stand or what your actual, um, not to kill you off, but just to say, like, just the truth about what the situation that you're in, you know, like, there's, there's, it's, that's why, as you said, communication there, like, that is the foundation, man. Mm. That's the communication, because if you communicate something to me, but I might not receive it in the way that you thought that I would receive it. Like it could lose me or it could lose that player. And that's why everybody receives things differently. And, and the communication is key as a leader. No, yeah, I think growing up through like through the academies, I think players should really focus on on um, not only just their technical ability, but focusing on these other psychological mm-hmm. attributes that they can think. Because I'll be looking at... Um, what coaches look for after a loss, like specific scenarios exactly. and what they look for in the dressing room or what they look for in a warm up, like from, mm. from their players, um, sort of hyping like their other teammates up. I know that some yeah, yeah. players are even recruited just for like bringing like, the good vibes, like being a good player in the, in the dressing room. Like, imagine, oh, really? I, I'd love to be in a, in a dressing room with like Jesse Lingard, man. Like, <laughs> I, I imagine he's in class. <laughs> Yeah. What about what, what would you say about body language? Because that's a form of communication also. I feel like coaches really get yeah. annoyed when players like display really negative body language like in the dressing room or on the pitch, like how they respond to adversity, like are they looking at the like feet? Like or do you think that's like a big one also? Body language is massive. Like I've been I've had to work on my body language because that's not how I want people to see me. So like if I'm if I'm um like, oh, when I lose the ball or like shrug shoulders, like, you know, like it doesn't, it doesn't look good on the outside. You know what I mean? Like I've looked at my games and I've looked at myself and I'm thinking, nah, I can't do that because I look like a Muppet. Mm. You know, I look like a Muppet. Nah, yeah. and, and that's why like body, like my dad was hammered me home about this. Like body language is so key. And it also is key, like for your confidence, like even how you just show up for yourself. Like if you're, if you're like, with your body language, another player can see if you are confident or not, even just by how you stand. You know, if I'm seeing that right back, right? If I'm looking at the right back and he's like, oh, my day's a bit nervous and, and I see that he's, he's just lost the ball and loses his head quick, I'm going to get in his head even more. I'm going to say, you're dead, you, bro. Just yeah, to get yeah. that extra bit. Bro, like these are all psychological things that you can get the advantage over your player. And at the end of the day, that, that's, what, that's what, this is competition. I've got to get this. I've got to. I've got to make sure that I'm performing at my highest level. And if you're stopping me from performing at the highest level, I'm going to go into that weakness that you just showed me. It's like having a competitive edge before even standing or showing what you mm. what you can do on the pitch. Literally, a simple thing like body language, like sh- like open, like opening up, is crazy. That can give you like a mental edge over your opponent. It's so mental. This is exactly what we're doing for like university right now. I have like a like group work and we're actually looking at body language a lot. And yeah. you're literally saying the exact same things as like what we see in like uh, articles, like journal articles and stuff, mm. like the science of it. So it's super reassuring to have like that, uh, like yeah. that you're actually agreeing with it. Um, yeah. yeah, it's mad. Yeah. So oh, you've, um, so you didn't get your contract at 18. Mm. Run me through. So you you're experiencing things like humiliation, like you, you worried to see your friends and family, like to sort of just show your face. Like, run me through what happened after that. So how quick did you get back on your feet mm. uh, in terms of your career? So, so so honestly, guys, like I can remember this day like it was yesterday. Mm. You know, like I can remember like uh, the gaffer at the time, Sir Alex Ferguson. He was like Kenji meeting, and I was just like, oh my days. And I was actually the first one. <laughs> I was actually the first wow. one. And um, I can just remember like going into his office and I was like, I'm not gonna call him boss sir. What <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, even though I see it, even though I saw him every day, it was like I feel like I'm going into his presence in his room. And as I open the door, you know, when you open a door and you're looking to see if it's all right, and he's just like, Come on, sit down, and I'm sat down in the chair, and I'm like, yo, mad. 
And I can remember him saying, like, Kenji, um, you've had an amazing time here and you've, you've got top quality. Like, you're just feeding into me, feeding into me. And then it gets to the point where he was like, listen, I can give you a deal right now, but I know that this isn't going to do you any good as you're not going to get the playing time that you deserve. So I was just like, wow, like, I can remember leaving that room, getting into my car, and I was just, I was just heartbroken, man. I was heartbroken and I was just like, wow, like, my, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I've let my family down. I've let my friends down. I've let everyone around me, like, who, like I said before, like, who actually am I? Like, I'm now not Kenji Gori, the footballer that plays for Manchester United anymore. And that was a big realisation to where I was at in my life. So I can remember getting in the car, uh, driving home. <laughs> and as I drove home, like I, park, I was parked like just around the corner to just get myself together. I was like, okay, what am I gonna tell my parents? How am I gonna tell them? What am I gonna say to my, to my girlfriend and my fiance right now? Like I'm my girlfriend at the time. I was like, what am I gonna share to them? My brothers, like they look, I was like, my little brother, he looks up to me. Like, how am I gonna share this news to him? And I can remember like oh, getting myself together opening the front door and uh, I, I, I walk up the stairs and I'm like, uh, I knock on their door and I'm like, hey guys, I got something to say. And they're obviously like, "How? why are you back so early? Like, that's, that, they're, they're thinking, huh? Yeah. And now like, even as I was sharing this story, like my dad even said to me, like, I already knew that this was going to happen. Like, as soon as you came back home, I was like, oh my days, yeah, I already know now because obviously he was like, why, why would you come back so early? So I knocked on the door, I sat down and I said, uh, guys, I'm not, um, I'm not getting, getting a new contract at, um, at United. And I just remember just bursting out crying, just burst out crying. Like all the emotions just came out and all the doubt, all the fear and all the, the things that they should see in me, you know, like I just felt like, you know, like a letdown. I felt worthless. I felt like, I felt, I felt, didn't know who I was to be honest with you guys like that that's the feeling that I felt and I know there's so many players that are experiencing this right now especially through this COVID time like there's so many players that without a club right now and that is difficult you know I run a community club on the ball squad and we speak about this most weeks where you know it's it's tough this is tough like and and as we speak about these things that we're facing and the, the challenges that we go through and I can remember where I was just sat there and my dad was just like, my mum and my parents were just like, hey, <laughs> come on, like, we love you regardless of what you do. Like, it's, it's irrelevant. But also he knows and he's experienced football. He knows exactly um, how to handle these things, what to do. So he kind of left me to it. I, uh, I, I left me to it. Um, it kind of took me that day and that night. And then I can remember going down for breakfast the next morning and he was just like, all right, Kenji, so... Um, you've been released, you're at the top, the only way is down. Where do you want to go? And, and what I did was then I was like, okay, I'm going to write down every single club um, below them where I feel like suits my style of play, my best opportunity to get into the first team, how many wingers are at that first team. So I wrote down like all the clubs that I thought would benefit me, would work for me. And that was, that's what I would advise any player that gets released right now. Be real with where you're at, look where you're at, and then look where you desire to go. Because if you don't know where you want to go, how are you then going to get, make the action steps in order to get yourself in, into that place, you know? So, so that's how, what I did. I was clear on where I wanted to go. I was clear that Swansea was on that list. And now it was like, how am I going to, what am I going to do to get there? You know, and that was the action steps. And then I actually went on trial at Everton. I went on trial at Everton. And that was like, I'm going to go and show everyone. I'm going to like, this is my time now. And there was like something inside of me that was like, I've now up leveled as a player. This knockback has now up leveled me as a player. Like I was like, I didn't even know I had this in me. I was unbelievable that week. I was honestly like, like not to say that, oh, this, I'm, I'm, I'm lit, but I, something came out of me that I've not seen in myself before. Yeah. And even like Darren Gibson at the time was like, 
you were unbelievable. He coming after after me, he went to the gaffer and was like, hey, sign him up. And I can just see all this happening. I was just like, yo, this is mad. You know, like confidence started to really come from me because my confidence got knocked. Confidence got knocked. I was like, yo, am I even good enough to play football? All these questions start to go into your mind because, you know, you're like, you've just been released. Yeah. Even though even though you're at United, like it feels like there's nothing else after that. But obviously perspective hits. When one door closes, another one opens. And that's just reality of life. You know, when one door closes, another one's going to open. It's not like every door is closed. You just got to open the right one. Yeah. So as I went into that um, trial at, at Everton, um, I can remember that week and I was just, I, I had a really good week, really good training week. And um, and it gets to, gets to the gaffer come, comes over and he says, listen, Kenji, really unbelievable, trained really well, um, but we're not going to give you a contract. And I was like, what? It's like, yo, how is that possible? In my mind, I was like, how is that possible? But I, like, I was so confident in my ability that I was just like, like it's okay. Even though I was like hurt and destroyed by that, like not destroyed, but hurt and, and touched by it. Like I knew I've got the ability to actually play at this level because I was training with the, like I had a training session with the first team. Like, I, I, I've got this, like I'm all right. And there was actually a scout at Swansea there. And the next week I signed for Swansea. So I'm sure I wanted, I wanted to share this because I know that there's a footballer out here that might be going on trial at places. You don't know who's watching. You don't know what's happening in this process. And that setback, that might not be the, the way for you. But somebody watching you there, like even that gaffer at Everton, he might get a deal somewhere else, but he's now seeing you play and he might catch you. So wherever you go, give it everything you got. Give it everything that you in your power to get there because you never know what door may open next. And then I signed my two-year deal at Swansea. So like... It's just, it's just crazy how life works. And, and yeah, like that's, that's kind of the process. I went absolutely on and on and on there, but <laughs> that's what the process was, brothers. <laughs> oh, yeah. nah, I, I sort of just wanted to let, like, to let you um, just carry on because I imagine for people listening, that was like a real good insight into, into what happens when you are released and, and sort of what's the best course of action to take mm. uh, to get back on your feet. Mm. Yeah, it's like, like getting released is from what you've kind of explained that for me, it's like kind of like losing a close one. Would you, would you maybe agree with that? It's like the grieving process is kind of similar maybe. Mm. Um, and I feel like with, like with adversity, you can always come out. Like there's always positives from it. Like I sustained quite a serious injury, like in my uh, amateur football career. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and at the time I was it's the worst thing ever, but, now, like, this is why I study sports psychology. It's, I've experienced this and I can help other people with my experience. And, like, you have that empathy, you know, you develop that empathy. Mm. can relate to people much more, you know. And what you're doing now is, like, so good. Like, sharing your experiences, I'm sure you're, you're hitting a lot of people here. I appreciate that a lot, man. And even as you just shared that then, and that's the reason why I do it, man. That's why the reason why I started my, um, my business on the ball, which is, for those that don't know, it's personal development and mindset coaching for professional athletes. And there's a couple of services and products that we provide. But that is the reason why I share the things that I go through. Because I know it's not easy. I've experienced these things. But what I do know is that I've experienced these things for a reason. Yeah. And if I've experienced this thing for a reason, like I need to share this in order to, for that seed to be planted in somebody else, for that then to save their life sort of thing. Like not to save their life as in like, but to just show them a different perspective of what they're actually going through. And, and hopefully a, something that I've experienced will stop them from going through the things that I did to basically help them along the way, you know? So, so yeah, I can completely relate to that, bro. We can't, we're going to ask you so much more questions about uh, on the wall and like your, your mission as a player and as a person mm -hmm. later on. So, uh, so save all that. <laughs> but um, I have a question for you, actually, you know, at Swansea, did you did you play with like Pozuelo? Yeah, did I did. You did. Yeah. yeah, he's he's a baller. He's he's baller. very good, very good. I was wondering if he was like that good at, at Swansea as well. He's yeah. a he's a real baller, man. Little number ten, bro. He was he was top, man. But you know what it what you know what it was though. Swansea had top players. Like he wasn't the standout. Okay. He wasn't playing every week. You know, he wasn't playing every week, but he had real quality, you know, and, and that's why managers 
like gaffers, their ideas is, is big. Because as soon as a new gaffer came in, it was like, Pasuela, you can leave, you know? Because he didn't fit a part of the plans. You know, and you can have all the ability in the world, but if, it doesn't, if, you, if you don't fit to a certain style of play, you know, like, it's, it's just crazy. But he was a big baller, man. Big, big yeah. baller. He was he was there when I was at, when I was working at Genk like the dude the, he was captain oh, like yeah, yeah yeah like we that was the year we won the league and he left like mid mid season to, to go to Toronto oh and then so, oh, okay yeah, but, yeah, yeah, so, yeah so they ended up but they ended up winning it but he played a massive role of like the first part of the season like he was unreal so yeah, yeah like man. massive respect to him like <laughs> everyone everyone like was kind of salty that he left but it is what it is man it was football man exactly it was football. So, um, yeah, so you, you've got to Swansea and how long was it before you went out on loan and, and talk me through like the loan process? Like, was that, did you feel like that was really beneficial for your career? So, yeah, so I signed for Swansea and as I signed for Swansea, it was like the first day I can just remember, like <laughs> I was active. I got the ball. I wanted to show it, everyone, like, you know, what I'm capable of, what I'm, well, who I am, you know? And I can remember, like, not, not so long after that, I was training with the first team. I was involved with them a lot. And I was just like, wow, like, yo, there's no, there's no stopping me now. And, um, and, you know, like, honestly, my time at Swansea was, it was, it was massive. It was such a massive, massive reality going from boy to man. Like, that process is mad. Like, people don't often see that process. Because now I'm going from boy to man, as in not just football, but life. Yeah. Like I've, got a, I've got my own responsibilities. I've got my bills to pay. I've got my house. I've got, I've got a clean. I've got a cook. You know, all these responsibilities that, you don't, that you're not really prepared for. Because what, what 17-year-old goes, goes and does that? You know, like, it's like... I'm now going into like the deep end, you know, living in a penthouse in Swansea. Like I was, I thought I was the guy. Yeah. I thought I was the guy. No one can stop me. That was my mentality. That was my, like, no, like this is, this is me. But then like you realize that, you know, football is there, but you've got a life outside of it. And all the pressures of football, like having to perform, like, like, why is this coach stopping me from getting to what I desire? And it was like, all these things really, it was difficult. It was difficult to manage. It was difficult to manage the expectations. And then I was like, yo, I, like, I felt like all these coaches were stopping me from getting to that goal. And, I, and it was, it took, it took a lot. I took a lot on. So like to, to try and deal with them emotions, I didn't know how to. I didn't know how to really deal with that sort of stuff. I didn't know how to deal with disappointment and not playing and being on the bench in the, in the, in the 23s. That all these things were really heavy on me. So, you know, like even in that time, like I, I was five years at Swansea. I was like, okay, on the pitch, you know, things are going well, but off the pitch, like, yo, I don't know. I don't really know what I'm doing, man. You know, I don't really know what, where, what I'm doing with my time sort of thing. So yeah, it, it was, it was a real reality check, man. It was a real reality check from, from, from where I am to, to, for where I was to where I am now, as, uh, certainly as well. So, so yeah, that was kind of my process, but then it gets to a point where, you know, I, I want to be playing every week. I want to be playing every week. So I can remember uh, making my Premier League debut felt like I this was it you know like yes finally I've worked so hard for this moment right now that it was like it was like a relief it was like yes I did it but I didn't really enjoy it because it was like I'm on to the next you know I'm on to yo what's next yo you know even though it was the last um, thing but I'm ready for next season and that's when I decided to go on loan I decided to go and get game time in Ado Den Haag and that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to go and do everything right now to, to go on loan and play every week. You know, Swansea was like, I signed in a new three-year deal. And I was just like, yo, this is mad. Like, I'm, I'm a 
I'm, I've made it. You know, like this is, I'm going to go and get game time at Ardo, then I'm going to come back and get into the team. That was my plan. Then these, that was also a massive reality check again. That football doesn't go the, it's not going to go the way that you want it to go. But what do you do? How do you handle that? Who do you go to? Who do you lean to? And I was, I was leaning on, on going out. I was leaning on alcohol. I was leaning on going gambling to fill that void. You know, so it was all these things that, that I experienced that have kind of led me to who I am today. You know, that has led me to, to what I'm doing today. And that's why I am passionate about what I do. That's why I do talk with passion. That's why I do do the things that I do because I felt the pain. I felt the, 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 the feelings of not feeling good enough or not feeling like worthy and all these things that I want to help other players that are feeling this way. You know, look at like Jeremy Whiston, for example, like it, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. And even as that news came about, it was like, I could relate, you know? Yeah. Like, could, could fortunately, I've, I've not, I've not, I, I never had that feeling of, oh, I want to, you know, commit suicide. And I don't know if that's even why he, he actually did that, but I know maybe it did play its part. Like, I don't want to share something uh, yeah, that might not be in that, in that way, but I could... I could relate, man. No, yeah, well, when that news come that out, thing. that was like one of the main reasons why I've took such an interest into this this um, mm. this topic, and uh, it sort of made me reflect on my psychological interests in my studies, like and sort of where I want to go with this. Because yeah. previously, I was very performance psychology, like helping athletes like reach their potential. But mm. I, I sort of had that reflection where it's like what else is the like I want to I want to be able to solve problems and, and that was it it's a huge problem in academy football <laughs> for sure no, yeah but I, I think a lot of people are talking more about it which is so good like what we're doing today like shedding light on it is only gonna improve the situation it won't improve it fast like we need time to like find solutions <laughs> but I think it's really good you know um, and I think a lot of people can relate yeah. It was a, a initiative put in place by the Premier League. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure whether you're aware of it, but the uh, Elite Player Performance Plan, and it's sort of like a initiative where we're trying to promote more homegrown youth players. But they also focused a lot more on education. I imagine they put it in place sort of around the time when you was at Man U. Mm. Like, did you feel that initiative come into place, or did you feel like it's not really had that much impact? Uh, honestly, guys, like. Being real with you, like back then, there was no doubt in my mind that I was going to be a professional footballer. Mm. Like, I'm going to be professional. Yeah. That was it. Like, there was nothing going to stop me. And that was my mindset. That was how I fought. So it wasn't about, you know, the plan B or this or, or what am I going to do? There was no, I'm going to be professional. So that was it. And I feel like, I feel like if you don't have that, then you got a question. You got a question if this is really for you. You got a question if this is really for you. And this is not to say not to focus on other areas of your life. Yeah. You got to focus on your relationships, your finances, your other areas of your life, of course. But if you're gonna go for a career that the one percent of the one percent make it, you got to give you everything to it. You got to do more than most people do. And that's what I've seen, you know, you see, you see people that make it and the people that don't make it. It's like, why did Jesse make it, for example? Jesse wasn't the, the, the most talented every age group. Jesse was playing with us in the under-16s when he was in the under-18s. Yeah. So, so why did he make it then? <laughs> you know? And the people that had all the talent didn't. Why did Michael Keane make it? He was the same. Michael Keane, he was playing with us. Under-18s playing with the under-16s. But why did he make it then? Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And, no, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a and, very um, difficult balance, like because it's a difficult balance. It's it's, a it's, balance. it's sort of trying to promote like like and like a lot of people do promote this like sacrifice everything sort of message, where, but then you sort of have to be real as well on on the other side that like we focus a lot on these success stories, like you're talking about Lingard, mm -hmm. you're talking about Michael Keane, mm -hmm. but like you said, like only 1% actually make it. So mm -hmm. it's like, there needs to, it's so, di like it's so difficult to actually put this in place, but 
there needs to be a wider identity, like what we were talking about, how they need to have like maybe other interests outside of football or maybe like, I, I, I think the transitional issue where, do you know how you said it's just one meeting? Yeah. I think it needs to be more of a progressive sort of thing where they need to sort of be made aware or have other career options in place where they're sort of aware of it because you come out of that meeting and you sort of just didn't even, like you didn't even know what, what was the next stage and you sort of had to process it during the night, wake up the next morning and go, right, what's next? Let's, let's plan it all out. Mm -hmm. But you've sort of had to make that plan after the meeting. Mm -hmm. I feel like this sort of plan needs to be more, more gradual. Yeah. And I think that will yeah. soften the blow of being released because that's like prevalent in the literature. Well, at, the end, at the end of the day, it's not really about softening the blow because at the end of the day, like that's life. Yeah. Like, yo, that's life. Let's be real. Like, that is life. That's not just because you're a football. That's in any walk of life. True. Not yet. That's in anything. Like, of course, you're going to get knockbacks. Of course, you're going to get setbacks. That's in every That's in every career choice that you go through. Yeah. That's in everything. But what my question is, like, why you? Why, should, why are you going to be the one that's going to make it? And that's your focus. Like, that's where your focus is. Don't focus on the 1%. Focus on what they do. And if you're not doing what they do, like you've got a question, you've got a question yourself. Like maybe it isn't made for you. Mm. You know, maybe it isn't made for you. But that, and that's why I just, I just wanted to add, like as a footballer, it isn't for everybody. It isn't for everybody. Yeah. And that's no. the truth. But if you've got an opportunity, if you're in a, you've got an opportunity to make it, like do everything in your power to do that. Do everything no. in your power to go and make that happen. Because at the end of the day, what 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 kid does that have that opportunity? What, no, yeah. what, what guy does have the opportunity? Go and do everything in your power to go to go and be the best football that you can be, but not putting your identity in it because that is not who you are. That is a whole different. That's a that's a different dynamic because it's not about it's not about it's about doing what you love to do. That's what it is. And because, because as, a, as, a, as a kid, for example, 16, 17, you know, you're at school or, or you're at college, like at the end of the day, what 16, 17 year old knows what they want to do in their life? Yeah, no, that's true. So why does it then have to be a footballer? He has to all of a sudden know what to do. No, yeah. No 17, 18, 16, 17 year old knows actually what to do. So why are we... Why do we feel like we have to, oh no, you've got to make a plan B because who else has a plan B? What 16, 17 year old has a plan B? Yeah. No one. No, yeah. I, 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 I do agree. <laughs> I do know? agree with the, like, you sort of need to identify what the other, like the 1% are doing and sort of being real that this is the sort of work you need to put in. Like, I, I, I do agree with that. Um, yeah, it is. It is so difficult. I think, like, because I've only just realised what I want to do in my life. Like, I come out of, I come out of my undergraduate degree. How old are you, my bro? 20, <laughs> 22, right? There you go. But there you go. Hey, you know hey. what yeah, I come out of my undergraduate. Like, I've just got a first class. I, I've, I've just got a high, like, a real big high, like a big achievement in my life. Like, I just achieved a first class degree. Hey, my, my back. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But, but then I realised, like, I don't know what, like, what the hell am I going to do with this? Like, I don't, I, I just didn't know what the next stage was. So, um, yeah, sorry, go on. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've come to love, bro, and now it's sort of really opened my eyes on what I want to do. So, yeah, like it is. Mm -hmm. a, it's just a, yeah. And that's and that's life. No, yeah. And that's life. Like what? So this football experience is leading you to what you want to go and do. Like that is why. Like why are we trying to? Oh, they've got to have a plan B. They've got to do. No, we've got to put these things in place. Why can't they just enjoy this process? And then actually take what they've learned in this into their life and know that this isn't actually what they're on this earth to do. You know what I'm trying to say? Like there's deeper things to it. And that's not to say like these things got to be put in place, you know, these unders, like we've got to really focus on that. But at the end of the day, bro, like football, it comes, like I said, it comes to an end. Yeah. Yeah. But do you think like, it's too late. Like, would you say it? Like, you know, when they get released, it's like too late because, like, you know, that whole education part is is like structurally, it's meant to be like throughout your 14, 15, 16 year old, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you don't focus that as as much as football, I know it's it's difficult. It's like what we're talking about finding the balance. 
But like, if you don't put all that like enough energy in it, then it's too late. When you get to that release stage, it's like, what do you do next? I feel like you're a well, primary. It, it, yeah, it depends what you want to do. Yeah. It depends what you want to do. Like, what do you want to be a business? Like, do you want to own a business? Do you want to do that? Like, do you want to? Like, I don't know what whatever. Every individual is different. But it depends what you want to go and, and do. Like you can either go to school and learn the and, and do school things, or you can learn from the people that are actually doing it. You want to be an entrepreneur? Well, go and study what the entrepreneur. Like I don't know. Like I don't yeah, know yeah. what people want to go and do. But I'm just trying to give a perspective of you can go and do what you want to go and do. But like you've got to do everything in your power to be the best at it that you can be no yeah i think yeah definitely being real about doing what you can do because realistically like with the small chances of making it to a pro, pro footballer like you do need to put in the work to get there and uh yeah i do agree with that you gotta um, be real with yourself man yeah would, would you say they sell you the dream like in, in terms of like throughout the academy like because that's a, that's an issue as well it's like they make you think you're the one but then Maybe they know in the back of their mind that you're not the one, but then you're kind of left, yeah. you know what well, I mean? There, there again, like, it's not really about what other people, it's how you yeah, see yeah. you. Like, it's not about, like, it can always be like, oh, what, what does the coach think of me? Or should, do you think he thinks that I think I can play for Barca? It's what I think mm. that matters. It's not what the coach thinks. The coach, yeah, like, I've got, like, I've got, like, even, <laughs> I don't really want to share this because I'm going through it right now, but like, <laughs> Coaches like right now, like they might want to stop you or try and think, say to you, oh, well, yeah, well, you're not, you not might not make it or you might not play. Who are you to tell me that? I'm in control of my death. God's in control of my destiny. You're not going to stop me from getting to where I want to go. And no, that, yeah. F football that, is a game of opinions. It's and... a, like one day you're the king, one day you're next. But at the end of the day, guys, like I'm going to enjoy it, man. And that's what my message is to any footballer that's in this. Enjoy it. Enjoy it because you're going to look back at your life and cherish that moment. Like I speak to friends now that cherish the moments of being under 14s at United. They cherish these moments. They're not no, playing yeah. anymore now, but they cherish these moments. It is, yeah, it is a, it is a proud moment. But I think um, <laughs> like you sort of found your, your, your feet, obviously like you're a really talented player, but a lot of these, a, a lot of players do get just, took along for the ride mm -hmm. and do you know when you went into that meeting when you was 18 or even when you were 16 did you know or did you think like you was going to get the contract or did you was you like did Prepared. you think you weren't going to get it what what was mm -hmm. your thought process going into that like on when when it was parity for 16 there was like a slight little doubt because i was like yo this guy getting a, this guy like you're, you're looking at your opportunities, aren't you? You're looking at who's ahead of you, who's playing in that age group two years older, who's playing there right now. And because you're going from 14s to 16s, it's like you've got to look at the age group above, like yeah. what, what guys are in that position. So I was kind of looking at that and I was looking at myself, like am I the best in my age group? Like being real with myself, like where am I, where am I at? Like where am I actually at? Like where, where do I compare to everybody in this team? Where do I fit in? And that's where I was like, no, I'm, I'll definitely, I, I was like, I'm confident I'll be getting a scholarship. I was confident in getting a scholarship. When it came to my pro, I was like, I could get one and I could not. Okay. That's what, that's what, that's what I was, that's what I was in my mind. Like, and I do believe like God took me out of there earlier than everybody else because I might have been put in checkmate. Where, yeah. And where I say checkmate is like, okay, now you get your pro, but if you don't get any minutes, like, you know, what good is that? Like, you're just training every day, which is great. But then you look at the likes of, like, Luke Giverin. Um, I don't know if you know his story, but he he got a pro. He got a two-year two pro, and, and he's not playing anymore. You know, and it kind of got him into checkmate because you get to a certain age with zero games on your belt. And it's like, you know, who's going to take you? And you've got to start, start again, you know? So, so it's it's... The thing is, like, football, as you shared, it's, a, it's, a, it's full of opinions. Mm -hmm. Full of opinions. Like, one day you're this, one day you're that. But at the end of the day, like, you've got to look yourself in the mirror and say, yo, <laughs> have I done everything in my power?
Yeah. How can I improve myself? What can I do in my, in, in my, am I showing up as my best self or am I letting this situation control me? Yeah. How much effort that I put in or are you just putting effort in? Like I, 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 I'm going to be real. Like it, it was a point in my career where I was only giving my all when things were going lit. When things were going lit, I was like, I'm on it, I'm on it. Doing my extras, going gym. When things were not going well, I was just like, cool. It would take me, take me too long to get over this disappointment. Take me too long to get over not playing on the weekend. When actually it's a whole, it's a new week. Like I'm a, why am I taking this into a new week? You know, I'm taking this experience into a new week. And there's so many players that take their past experience into their new experience. And when you take a past experience into your new experience, now, like, you're getting triggered by something that would have triggered you here when it's not that here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, for example, like, if you're not then, if you're not in the starting lineup for the weekend, well, that doesn't mean to say that you're not going to play on the weekend. It just means that this is what the coach is looking at here. It doesn't mean you're not going to play, but you, you have stories in your mind that you've already made up. You know, and, and these are the things, you know, it comes with work. It, like I've really worked on myself with these things. I've really understood why I feel the way I feel and why I'm going through these things. And, and that's why I do with the things that I know I'm trying, I try to help other footballers with that, you know? So, so that's kind of, that's kind of, we've kind of gone all over the place here. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I've, I've really enjoyed like uh, getting a footballer's like sort of um, perspective on, on, like that, that, that process of mm. like academy football and sort of what players need to do to, to achieve that. So th thanks for giving that insight. So I think it's a good time to move on. <laughs> yeah. um, so you talked briefly during that process about um, like alcohol fe feeding that gap or gambling. Mm. Um, and I, when I was doing like me and John was doing research, like we sort of seen that you, you done an article, I'm not sure who with, but about your gambling addiction. Um, mm. What sort of like brought that on? So it was like, honestly, it was like, what am I going to do? Like, it was like, okay, I've got so much time on my hands. Like after football, like what am I going to go and do? So it's like, there's so much FIFA that you can play. There's so much this that you can yeah. do. Like, what am I actually doing with my time? So it was like, I would, I would go to training. I would come home. And then it was like, wait, football's not going well. That's not going well. I'm not playing. You know, my relationship's on the rocks. What am I going to go and do? Like, you know what? Let's go gambling. Let's go. And, and, I, and as soon as that ball was spinning on that roulette table, it was like, give me like a sense of like, oh, come on, yeah. let's go. Let's go. And then when you win, it's like, yeah. And it's like, oh, oh. And it was like trying to fill something with the wrong thing. <laughs> Cause it was like, it's not even to say that it, like it is the wrong thing, but I mean, it was like to try and fill something that the world couldn't fill. Okay. And that's where I really invited, I really understood that I'm, the things that I want to fill my life with, the things that how I want to feel, is like, I really want need to understand what I want. That's how I kind of got over that. Like it was like, and then I, I, I started to realize that it was, a, it was a situation where it was like, I would start to go twice a week and then I would start to go. And then it got to a point where I was going every day. It was like a process. It was like a process. It wasn't just like, all right, I'm, I'm now in, I'm now going gambling. Like it was like a process. And it was like, it was like a part of the routine. It was like after training, I would go, I would even go back home and I was like, oh, let's go back to the casino. Let's go again. And it was yeah. like that consistent thing. And it was like a battle in my mind. It was like a, oh, it's not that bad. I'm not really losing that much money. Like, so it's sort of become like part of your like, routine. And, and then- Being part of the routine. And it was like yeah. a part of the normal. It was like so normal in that. Like, and, and, I, and I went with, I used to go with uh, one of my friends, one of my um, one of the teammates. We used to just go together and we used to just be like, like, it, was like it was like, oh, it's not even that, that's not that deep. Like, yeah. it's, not that, it's not that bad. Do you think the That's void that you were trying to fill, do you think that was a, a time where you weren't really in the starting lineup? Like, I'm just trying to understand, like, what sort of, like, the void we're talking about. So, mm -hmm. do you think it was that, and then you're missing that buzz of playing, so you're yeah. sort of trying to get the buzz from somewhere else? Yeah, it was really that. It was really, like, I, I, 
I expected or I felt like I should have been playing with the first team. I felt like I should have been in the first team. And then it got to a point where I wasn't even playing in on the 23s. You know, and I was just like, huh? how can I go from being a top goal scorer, top assist in the league and not playing now? You know, so it was like dealing with all these things and dealing with like, yeah, just just this, the sense of like not knowing how to really handle what I'm going through, feeling internally. And that's that's kind of what it all was. And and that's why I kind of went like looking back now. No, what, yeah, look, go on. what made you kind of snap out of that, actually? Like, was it your realisation yourself or was it like support from other people or... It was honestly, it was honestly the day where, the day where my fiance said to me, like, my, my fiance now, so my girlfriend at the time said to me, I, I, I can't be with you anymore. I can't be with you anymore. And then she kind of, she left. She left and I was just like, yo, this is kind of mad. Like, yeah, I don't know, well, wait. And that's when I started to ask myself the questions, like, what do I really want for my life? Like, what life do I actually want to live? Like, who do I want to be? Who do I want to become? And once I started to ask myself them questions, like, that's when I started to really say, like, this has got to stop. That's got to stop. That's not who I want to be. And not for somebody else, but for me. You know, like, that was, it wasn't for my fiancé. It was like, I want to get her back, of course, but it wasn't like, that wasn't like the driving force. The driving force is like, I want, I want to be the best that I can be. I want to be the best person and not just the best player, but the guy, the, also the best brother, also the best son. Like, I just wanted to be the best guy. Like, that was really what it was. And, and then I asked myself, like, what would it look like if I was the best guy? And I started to like kind of be in my process there and started to invest in, in my mind and started to invest in coaches, like mindset coaches and stuff like that. And, and I started to understand what, what I really wanted from my life. And that's when my life really started to be aligned, started to really get aligned. And I started to realize why I was going through the things that I was going through and why things were happening in my life and why I'm out here in Portugal. You know, it's just asking yourself why you're going through these things and that's going to lead you to who you are. So do you think that was like, uh, so you got out of the addiction like just by yourself or was there any help that you sort of um, got from others? Yeah, like obviously there's, there's, like honestly it was kind of like where I kind of invited God into my life. Okay. It was like where I invited God into my life where it was like, wait, why am I on this earth? like why am I here like yeah. what is going on and yeah when I really invited that into my life and I didn't want to do this anymore it was like a gradual process and now it's like I'm not when was the last time and I can't even think when I last went you know like I can't even think when I last went but it was just a phase in my life where I would just go every day you know I would just go every day and I know that the seasons to everything and the seasons to your life and and stuff like that and that was just that season that I had to go through but I had to go through that to be who I am today Oh yeah, it's all, it's all a lesson at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I, I still just, went through the same experience. I just wanted to say, you know, that kind of like addiction, like root, it's quite common with like retired players, I feel like. And I, I don't think a lot of people realise that it can happen like during your actual football career. So it's super interesting that you're kind of sharing your experience with it. Um, mm -hmm. there's, there's, they, so you know, there's so many players. Yeah. Mate, there's I've so seen Paul, Paul Merson when he would come out and talk about it, he's had like quite he's got an addictive personality and he was talking about all his different addictions and stuff and mm -hmm. he was speaking about the gambling I feel like gambling is like a huge huge mm. thing in football mm -hmm. do you think like the amount of money like footballers earn is a, is a big part of that like they've got more money they can sort of deal with or or do you not think that's like a um, I don't really think it's the, the money side of it with yeah. gambling like, I just don't think that... You think it's, it's the buzz sort of thing? It's just it's just kind of the buzz. It's just kind of like what you go to. It's like you can either go to that, you can go to drinking, you can go to partying, you can go to all these things. But at the end of the day, like, that doesn't fulfill. So I was trying to look for that. What, what is going to fulfill? Like, what is going to fulfill me? Like, and I started to look at other areas of my life. Like Football wasn't the be-all and end-all of my life. That was just that was just the real real reality because I was if football was going bad my life was bad like that's how I used to think if I'm not playing on the weekend like my life is peak that's how I used to think that's how my mind used to be and that's just not the truth yeah that's just far from the truth 
No, yeah, it's, uh, I, I'm really liking this like sort of reflection sort of thing. I feel like I've got to go away after this and uh, sort of have a <laughs> reflection on my own because, yeah, I definitely like look look for other things. Like I sort of stopped like stopped gambling. It, I didn't have an addiction. It was just like sort of getting out of hand. But I definitely like if I'm being real with myself, I sort of like take do you know when things aren't going my way. Mm. It in, in my life, I sort of turn to like food and sort of having like like comfort eating and stuff like that. So. I think, yeah, I, I need to like go away, have that sort of reflection. And uh, I think it's, this has definitely helped me personally. Oh, that's amazing, man. That's so yeah, good to hear. <laughs> yeah, you're like touching other people, yeah, touching people beyond football, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Exactly <laughs> I think right. a lot of people listening. Yeah, I think if you're listening to this, like, I, I feel like a lot of it can be transferred to like o- o- other things. So, well, is, yeah. Yeah, and I, f- okay, I feel like this is a perfect time to, to move on and talk about what your mission is as a as a person and as a player so you set up conversations with Kenji and on the ball squad like go ahead and, and tell us more about that what's your, what's your mission yeah honestly like my mission is to really support players in being the best on and off the pitch and how i feel that works is is the separator really is is your mindset is like how you do handle these disappointments, what you do when you're not playing, what you do with your life off the pitch. You know, it's like that That really is uh, what I'm passionate about. And that's where on the ball really birthed from. It birthed from that I wanted to help footballers with what they go through. Because I know that it's not easy. And everybody, like the people that I speak to, it's not. it's not easy. So I started my business around um, a year ago, um, about a year and a half ago. And yeah, it's personal development mindset coaching for professional athletes. And like you shared, it's got a couple of products and services that I provide from the the podcast, which I've got some really interesting stories on there, which I wanted to kind of just help players in the situation to understand that, yo, like these stories, like, it's not just that their life was just suddenly in the prem or it wasn't just suddenly that they just got there. It was like success leaves clues, you know, success leaves clues. And where can you implement these things that they did or implement the things that they didn't do into your life? You know, and there's so many, like I've got so many uh, messages from players, how it's impacted their career and how it's impacted their lives and even not players. You know, like not non-players that, that have impacted their life to understand that, you know, that they're more than their career. You know, that, that you're more than your career. You're not just your career. Your, your value isn't based on, on how many views you get on your Instagram or how many views you get on your podcast. Like, it's the amount of imp- lives you actually impact through that. And that's, yeah. that's what I've kind of realized that even with that, like the story of Daniel James, such an inspiring story, like, I was playing with him, like I was with him at the in the under 23s. And he actually um he actually went on loan to League One. Can't remember the club, but he didn't play a minute. The next season, plays every game and moves to United. Mm. So he went from last season not playing in League One, not getting a minute. To go into Manchester United, the biggest club in the world. Yeah. So that is football. <laughs> and I just wanted to give that understanding and that awareness of that is possible. Oh, it yeah. is possible. So if it is possible, if it's been done before, then you can't tell your mind that it's not possible. You can't tell yourself that it's not possible. So I kind of wanted to, to share that experience. I wanted to share everyone's experiences because everybody's is different everyone's experience is different but we all go through the same things yeah we all go through disappointment we all go through these things so so that is the reason why i did it um and then and then on the ball squad i wanted to i wanted a place where we could there wasn't a place where footballers could come together to speak about these things but also actually have a way to get over these things actually know how to handle these things so we get guest experts and ex-professional footballers to come and share the story and, and learn how we can actually handle these things. So, so yeah, that's the reason why I do it, man. I haven't seen, I haven't seen anywhere of, of someone doing that, literally. Like, it's so smart. And, and I'm sure it's so helpful to the players. Do you think it's, like, it's, it's actually better having, like, players giving advice to other players? Or, like, 
what do you think? Because obviously <laughs> a big part of our job is to help like professional like athletes, etc. But I feel like in some areas we, we may not be able to provide the best advice as like compared to the players who are in that group of yours, you know. Like would you I what think, think I think I think obviously if you've experienced it, you've got a different perspective on it. So you can actually relate to what they're going through. So there's a couple of guys in there that are injured, for example, right? So a guy that's already been injured or done his ACL before, he can share his perspective on what he went through and kind of help this guy deal with what he's going through. But if 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 someone that's not experienced that tries to tell him how to deal with it, he's like, Well, how do you know? <laughs> you know, like how do you know? And that's not to say that what you have to say isn't of value. That's not to say if what you what you have to share can't impact his life. It definitely can. But it, I think it gives it a bit more understanding and, and action steps what they did so they can actually help in their life. So yeah, I think that gives a different perspective, you know? No, that's like so true. And that I we sort of like did a podcast. This whole reason why I like I've enjoyed getting you on the podcast so much is because we done a podcast uh, episode six on the impact of getting released. And mm-hmm. I'm just talking from the literature perspective and sort of what I sort of like know from my friends. But mm-hmm. getting you on and talking about like your perspective through it and sort of a football player's perspective is like it's opened my eyes so much to how they feel. And so yeah, like I think just telling stories about and understanding different people's stories their, their perspectives is so important and you can listen to a whole podcast in like just two minutes you can just take away and get like it'll help you so much so yeah it's so good yeah, yeah so good it. It, man. i so wish good. i was i wish i was in that group like i'd be so curious to see what what you guys yeah. say like it's, it must be like honestly it must as i'm putting myself in their position like it must be so reassuring to have you know because you were talking about football is a lonely place. I remember you, this is like, this is how yeah. we got in touch with you. Like we, we responded to your story saying like, yeah, I remember, respect yeah. you. And like having that group is honestly like. Yeah, yeah, like, and that's why, you know, I realized like it is important. Like this is important what, 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 what God has really placed in my heart to do. You know, like I say it all the time, but sometimes I just feel like I just want to be a footballer sometimes. You know, I just want to be a footballer. Why am I doing this? You know, like, but God continues to give me the strength to do that. And I know that I have this platform for a reason. I'm on this platform as footballer for a reason. And that is to help other footballers go through what they go through. And that is for them to understand that they, to be the best on the pitch doesn't mean you're the best in life. You know, like we could, we've got so much more to us than just what we are on the pitch. There's way more to us, way more. But we limit ourselves like every other human. <laughs> like we all have limits. We all have limits to what we limit ourselves to. And I just, re- I just stepped into that, that I'm not just a footballer. That's it. Like there's more, way more to me than just being a footballer. So yeah, that, that's how I try and encourage other four footballers to know that they're not just footballers. You know, they're way more than that. You know, you're also a dad. You're also, if you've got kids, you're also a, you're also a son. You're also a husband or a, or a partner. Like go and be the best partner as well then. You want to be the best, go and be the best partner as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, like that, that's what that's why, and that is a place where we can come and be authentic and be real, be transparent, and and not no judgment. You know, in the football, like there's so many, like there's you got to try and be a certain way and to act a certain way, and you know, like it, it's 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 hard, it's hard sometimes. So yeah, man, I appreciate your words, guys. Do you think life outside of football can really affect like you on the pitch? Because like, well, this is just something I'm really interested in before we move on to the questions from the, from the audience. And I just a thought come into my head about how like Lingard was supposedly struggling like in, in his personal life and he's sort of gone to West Ham and it's like, he's a completely different player and going back to the player he once was at Man U. Mm-hmm. Um, so do you think that like life outside of football can really affect it? your your performance on the pitch for sure for sure like everybody is different Mm. you know you speak to players and it's like like for me for example like when I'm on the football pitch nothing else really comes into my mind yeah I'm just so focused on on the pitch like it doesn't really it doesn't really affect it until you step off the pitch (laughs) yeah no that's that's sort of same perspective as me when I was playing Mm. how like I sort of look at football as like a release from from all those things outside of, uh, in my life so so yeah 
it's true. And but that's when, so when football doesn't go well, then it's like, oh my days. Oh. Yeah. And it's this dangerous. is what we struggle. And this is the danger of it. Yeah. This is the danger of of that. But yeah, man, it's it's uh it's a journey. Everyone's on their own journey, everyone's on their own um perspective of what they think, and 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 that's why you've always got to be open for growth. Like you can't just think like I used to think like I knew it all. I used to think like, no, nah, you can't tell me how to, how are you going to tell me? You know, like, that's how I was. I was, I was so in that. But as soon as I started to really understand like that, you can learn and grow from everything. Like there's always, there's, there's, there's no limit to growth, you know? Yeah. So it's that, it's that, that's where, that's where I'm at right now. And I just hope that football that is listening to this right now is encouraged by what they, where they are at in their life to know that, what they're going through, it's not, it's not, it's not forever. You know, if you're not playing right now, it doesn't mean you're not going to play the next game. If you're not in the team right now, it doesn't mean you're not going to be next season. Like one game, one season, one, one, one training session doesn't define your career. Yeah, and I think so. Like the the sort of social media aspect as well, and like mm-hmm. like when you have one bad game, it's like everyone jumps on your back, and it's like that must be so hard to deal with. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure whether you can like give an insight into like. Joe, you how, like if you have a bad game and a player is just straight on their phones and they can sort of see like their Twitter feeds, like is that what it's like? It's 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 it's, it's not easy. No, you know the abuse that you get. It's not easy, man. It's tough. Like, I'm you don't want think... people to say certain things about you, no, but yeah. at the end of the day, like you've got to ask yourself what's the truth in it, and that's in everything in life. You know, like what is the truth in this situation? Like if if you feel like oh the coach doesn't like me, well what's the truth in that? Has he told you? Or because at the end of the day, you just want to win. You know, like that. What is the actual truth in what the situation is? And that's what I ask myself. Like, what is the truth in it? Had a bad game. <sighs> Had a bad game. Like, it doesn't mean that I didn't give my all in it. Or and that and that's where you know, like, you only really feel bad if you know that you could have done more. Yeah. You know, if you know in your heart that you could have done more, if you know you give everything to it, you're you, you're all right. You're yeah, all right. sort of. That's sort of like the mindset I take into my, my studies. Like me and John, this, when we're revising for like exams and coursework, you never leave like anything for for, for that factor. Like, leave like, everything. Make sure out you there. do everything. Yeah, yeah. make sure you do. If you do everything in your power. Like, it's all right. You know, you yeah. give your all to it. Your whatever result you get, it's all right, man oh man, you're upset because you did all that work, but it's like, I can look myself in the mirror and be proud. Yeah. That's regardless of what, because at the end of the day, like it's all about building that character of who you are, isn't it? It's all about who you are. It's yeah. not about what you have or what, what you do. It's about who you are. So it leads back to like a growth mindset where with hard work and like good strategy, like anything's possible and you can sort of put your mind to anything and, and you can achieve it. Definitely. Uh, man, I, I've loved uh, like the way you look at things and I feel like a lot of people will take away from this well, from what I've taken away, like the reflection part of like after everything, whether it's positive or negative, like having that reflection, I feel like it's helped you so much. And uh, I feel like I'm going to like try and apply that to myself as well. Oh, that's encouraging. <laughs> for, me, for me, the truth part, that's so like, that's what I'm going to take out of this today. Like, sure. is it true or not? Like, the, the like, true. yeah. So true. Like oh, no one, no one's, oh, no one's replied to this to this video. Oh, no one's, no one's. There's not much likes on this page on this thing. Yeah, but does that mean the video is not good? Like, yeah. there's the truth in it. Like, what are you making it mean? What do you make the circumstance that you're going through mean to you? Yeah. That is, that is what it's all about. Like, what story do you keep playing in your mind? Like, it's yeah. I've just realized that I was just on, re- I was on repeat. <laughs> Yeah, and it's yeah. all about breaking that cycle, you know, breaking that. And that, where does it come from? It's, yeah, it's deep stuff, guys. It's deep stuff, man. I know, it's been, it's been class. But uh, yeah, I think it's time to, uh, we asked, obviously, put a story out on all mm. our social medias about um, if they had any questions for you. So me and John will just go one for one and we'll ask a couple of them. Uh, we've picked out the best ones. So, so yeah, <laughs> if you want to go first, John. Um, so, so, what advice would you give an academy player right now? You kind of obviously touched up on it quite a lot in this episode, but if you had like a like type of advice, what, what, what would you give? To enjoy it. To honestly enjoy it. Like, know that if you're in an academy, you're blessed, man. 
that's whatever level you're at. Like you're you're getting the training that people wish for. Yeah. People wish for this to be in that training session. The amount of players that I speak to is like, oh, I wish I was training every day or I wish I was a part of a team. Like, bro, you're blessed. So enjoy the moment, embrace it, but give it all you got. Now, that would be my advice. Because you've got yeah. an opportunity of a lifetime right now in your hands that you're not going to have in five years. Oh, yeah, so true. Okay, so the next one is, um, what was it like to play at United's Academy with the likes of Paul Pogba, Lingard, etc.? Like, what, what are the levels? Like, how, how good were they? High level. Oh, <laughs> hey, I mean, bro, high level, high level. And looking back, obviously, it was normal at the time. You know, it was just yeah. normal. But that was, it was a high, high level, man. Like, it was the best in the world. Like, that you're training and playing with the best players in the world at that age group. So, like, yeah, it was high. It was high, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot from the guys. I learned a lot of how they present themselves and who they are and, and how they really... You know what I realised most is that they know what they're good at. Mm. Like, as soon as someone knows their quality and what they provide in the team and not try and do extra or try and do what they're not supposed to be good at. Like Vidic knew, like the best players know exactly what they are good at. And that's what you can see in that likes of, you know, at, at that time, there was some amazing players, but that's what, that's what really separates, you know, when, when you know what you give to a team. Man, it's like Robin, like, Cutting on that left, oh, you, no. you, you know he's going to do it every time, but you just can't stop it. You can't stop it. So he's Let's obviously go. mastered it. He's yeah, mastered yeah. it. Let's he's probably doing it every day in training. Yeah, finesse. Um, yeah, so the third question is, do you use any, like, psychological techniques, like, with regards to your performance? So, like, do you, like, do any, like, breathing techniques, like, if you feel anxious, like, before a game or... Do you use any of those or, or do you, yeah. Yeah, so, so for me personally, I have like, um, <laughs> I have this like Hulk moment. <laughs> so where I turn into the Hulk, right? All right. So if someone says something to me that triggers me, or if I feel that I'm not in the spirit of the game, or if I feel like I'm just hearing my name all the time, the coach saying, Kenji, 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 play Kenji, Kenji, Kenji. It's like Hulk. And when I turn into the Hulk, it's like, give me the ball. Let me just, like, I'm turning into that. I'm stepping into it. So I'm like, that kind of gets me back into that game mode, you know? Oh, yeah, that's a cool perspective. So like, uh, it's not something that works for you. Hulk, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> class. <laughs> okay, so the uh, next one is, um, who is the best player you've played with or against? Ah, you know what? <laughs> Left him stumped. You have, to, you have to say certain man, like yeah. you know what I mean. You have to say all oh, right, top yeah. three, top three. You know you have to say Pogba, Rooney, Ibrahim. Oh my god! You yeah. have to say these guys, but the best, like, <laughs> like the talent, obviously, Robert Morrison. Man. Really? This guy, different world, different world, man. Like the way he handles a ball, like the way he can dribble left foot, right foot, the same. Bro, like any footballer can just look at that and be like, yo, that's a different level. Yeah. He's so been doing a lot recently about like uh, a lot of interviews and st podcasts and stuff about like his journey. Mm. Uh, I wonder, I, I need to sort of listen to him because I just feel like he, like for, for what everyone says about him, he didn't sort of like achieve what he could have done. Mm. Um, yeah, man. I wish I could, because I didn't really like watch him back then because I, I was too young. But mm -hmm. I wish, uh, I wish I could have seen that. Oh, the best, the best, by far. Like, <laughs> like the thing is, by like, far, everyone looked, up to, everyone looked up to him. Yeah, everyone was looking for him. Like it was like, even like Pogba, Jet, all of them. Like they were passing. Wow. To, like, he, he was the one. He was the guy. <laughs> yeah. He was the guy, and he was he was doing the same thing in the first team. I wasn't like it was like he would do it in the eighteen, not do it. He would do the same thing. <laughs> like that's how good he was. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the final one then is um, what sort of other hobbies or interests do you have outside of football? 
Oh, hobbies, man. I've got a bare hobbies. <laughs> um, what do I like to do? I like, to, like my life out here. Obviously, I'm living in the sun and stuff. I like to go down to the to the natural pools. So we have like a natural pools. Lie there and and yeah, enjoy. Um, I like to I like to yeah play FIFA. I like I'll to give you a game. Oh, God. Nah, man, you don't want to play me. Nah, I'd smoke you. I'd smoke you. <laughs> I don't want to play. I don't want to kill your confidence. Man. Oh, nah, um, trust me, trust me. Hey, but I like I, I like to play FIFA. Obviously, the, with the business side of things, that's my purpose in my life, man. Like, yeah. Spend a lot of time on that. Um, and yeah, that's that's kind of my hobbies out here, man. Do you yeah. listen to Do you just Do you listen to Dutch music? Yeah, I do. You do? Who do you listen to? I listen to John Fraser. Um, I listen to Frena, SFB, Bruder Liebe. Oh, you like SFB? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I Lieder. love these guys, good, man. Good That's guy, so good. So, and Jay as well. Jay. Jay's the Jay. one. Jay's the one. Yeah, here in Belgium, we listen to a lot of like music around us. So we're like heavily French uh, influence mm. and like obviously like in Holland also so I came yeah. across SFB quite recently and oh my god these guys that's are good, unreal good. Yeah, that's good, that's good. so yeah that's sort of uh, it's a good place to sort of wrap up uh, we hope we sort of give like a 30 second to a minute for anything you want to like shout out um, we'll obviously put all your socials and stuff uh, and links to on the ball in the description so basically have- yeah man yeah honestly nah, guys continue to be you man continue to keep shining that light because boys, like what you're doing is making an impact in the world. Like, like, like don't stop. You know, that yeah. like, this is clearly something that you guys are passionate about. It's clearly something that can help so many players. So honestly, guys, just continue to, to, to do everything in your power to, to impact people's lives, man, because it's changing and helping people around the world. So keep doing you. And for any footballer that is listening to this, like, please reach out, man. Please reach out. Uh, come and join the squad if that's something that you're interested in. And honestly, it's just a place where we just come together and 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 share things that we go through, share things that successes as well. Like it's lonely, man. Football's lonely. Our family, our friends might not understand what we're going through. And yeah, it's just a place where we kind of come together and and and, and really do life together. So come and yeah. join the brotherhood. Check that out, yeah, for sure. So um yeah, if you could please uh, share this with your friends or someone you feel like will benefit from it. Uh, and most importantly, uh, like, subscribe, comment down below any questions on the on, on what we've had and done here. Uh, and we'll answer them in the bonus episode on our YouTube channel. Or comment down below any topics you'd like us to cover in the future or any guests you'd like on. Uh, and other than that, thanks for listening and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Yes, yes, yes.